Hello fellow music nuts, it's me Cubby with another personal spin. Today I am doing another ranking video. It's been a while since I did one so I figured I'd do another one because I just have all these piles waiting to be ranked. So today I thought I would do Iron Maiden. Um, I love Iron Maiden. Um, I did sort of come to them late in a sense. I was introduced to them as a sort of a 14 no uh, maybe 12 year old and i like the songs i heard but i never really bought any of their albums or anything like that for quite a while and um one day i realized wait a minute why haven't i got any iron maiden except for number of the beast and then i bought them all i think it's partly because the drummer in the band i was in was really really obsessed with them and i um anyway so i bought them all um so they don't really have a nostalgic presence too much for me because um because of that basically i was 12 in 2000 so they'd already sort of although i just in time for their big comeback album which is probably why it ranks so high for me um so let's get started shall we as you know i don't like to yabber for too long so my least favorite is rather probably rather predictably um the x factor um, it's got a couple of really good songs on it. Um, Blaze Bailey, there's nothing wrong with his vocals, but I am just used to uh, Bruce Dickinson, to be perfectly honest. And not only that, but you can kind of hear that they really were entirely shagged out and probably could have done with a break, to be honest, by this point. And also the album is like 70 minutes long and... and for me that's just too long it's just way too long for this particular album and by the end of it you're sort of just waiting for it to finish because it's not that enjoyable um next we have the other blaze bailey album now i don't dislike them because blaze bailey is in the band i just think that rather than finding another vocalist they probably should have actually taken 10 years off because I don't know, I just feel like they should have, because they only released two albums anyway in, in this period. Well, actually three if you include Fear of the Dark. Um, but compared to the 80s period, they were much less prolific. So, um, I don't know, I get the feeling they probably should have had a, a little bit of time off. This one I like slightly more, um, because it's, A, because it's less long, but also it has the Klansman on, which I really like. I actually heard that album, that song, first on the compilation, the two disc compilation. I've forgotten the name of it now. Um, and I really like it. And it's not a terrible album. It's just not as good as some of their other albums, basically. And something's got to be last, hasn't it? So there we go. Next up is uh somewhere in time for me i i it's my th third least favorite whatever um for me i i love the album artwork i think it's brilliant um but for me this album just never really caught on except for wasted years um i don't know it just, i just never really enjoyed it that much um I don't know why, to be honest. I've just never really got into it. So, consequently, I've never listened to it all that much. And maybe I should. Um, next up, we have The Final Frontier. Um, nothing horrendously bad about it. In fact, I have a poster of it just there. You could probably just see the, the end. Um, and I like the obvious... Um, final frontier song and stuff and I, I like the fact that the band are going in a sort of proggy direction um but for me it again it, it just never really hit that well um i think the band don't or they didn't at this point anyway really specialize particularly well in really long songs and loads of them so again the album's a bit overly long and there's only it's just too long you know it 
Um, and Bruce Dickinson's voice sounds really tired on this one as well. Um, tireder than their newest album. So again, I think maybe he was struggling in some way. Next up, we have the debut album. I love the raw energy of this album. Um, I like the sort of bass heavy production and um, Charlotte the Harlot. Remember Tomorrow, Running Free. They're all pretty good songs. Prowler. But they're, 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 oh, I've just realised something. Sanctuary on my copy of the CD has a zero uh, running time. Um, so yeah, I like it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, for me, though, um, at this point, Iron Maiden is still basically a uh, metal band that are fronted by a punk rocker. And, and it doesn't quite work. But it, it does in some way. Um, I think they're still finding themselves on this album. But it is a pretty good album. I listened to it yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, the day before on my speaker while riding my bike. Next up, we have A Matter of Life and Death. Um, I particularly like the reincarnation of Benjamin Breeg. Um, I think it's brighter than a thousand suns and these colours don't run. Um, all of the 2000s um, and later... Iron Maiden arms tend to be really long and in my opinion my humble opinion I think they're actually a little bit too long and they get a bit carried away and I think that sort of happened on this one as well they need to sort of practice a bit of what not quality control but just sort of length control really um because again by, by the time it gets to the last song or last two songs, it's kind of like, yep, yeah, okay, how many different ways of whittling can you do? And and, and it just, where well, you want a different sound for a bit, type thing is what I'm getting at, I suppose. But, yeah, no, it's a, it's a good album. Next, we have No Prayer for the Dying. This, a lot of people don't really like this album, but I, I uh, have always really enjoyed Tail Gunner, Holy Smoke, uh, oh, crumbs. Um, that hooks in you and the assassin, I think it is, or is it fake one? I should know these, really, but there we go. And obviously, bring your daughter to the slaughter is pretty cool as well. Um, however, I will say that in spite of this, the band sounds tired, the playing sounds tired, the production sounds tired, everything about it just sounds like they needed a break. By this point, they've been playing pretty much non-stop since 1980. For, so for like eight years, they've been recording, touring, recording, touring, recording, touring, recording, touring, recording, touring. And I, th and, and I think, and you can tell really, that it's got to them by this point and uh, that they needed to stop, basically. They didn't. They actually released another album, uh, but it was what, four years later. So they actually had a bit of a break and it shows, but we haven't got to that album next. My next favourite album is Killers. This is like a refined version of the debut album. Um, they've worked out how to write some, I don't want to call them hits, but stuff like more memorable stuff like Wrathchild and Murders in the Woo Morgue. Um, Killers is good as well. Um, and, and things like that. They're beginning to sound like classic Iron Maiden. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a good one. I like that one. Next up, we have Fear of the Dark. Now, they released this in 1992, I believe. Which is four years after No Fear of the Dying. And you can kind of hear that they've sort of had a break. And... They don't sound as tired, um, but I think ultimately uh, Bruce Dickinson was, was bored, <laughs> basically. Um, and uh, yeah, that said, though, they wrote um, Fear of the Dark. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, where is it? Afraid to Shoot Strangers and Be Quick or Be Dead, which are all really good songs. And From Here to Eternity is also good. The Fugitive isn't bad either. Um, it's actually a pretty good album. Um, but yeah, ultimately, 
I think a band, not Steve Harris, obviously, um, probably uh, could have done with a bit of a longer break or something. I don't know. Um, also, great cover art. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, we're now into the top one, two, three, four, five, six. The top seven, just to be different. Um, my next favourite is Iron Maiden, Dance of Death. Uh, this came out when I was 15. It's probably why it's ranked so high. Um, Rainmaker is a great song. Passchendaele is quite possibly the greatest ode to World War One ever written by a metal band. Probably. Except possibly Sabaton. Um, no More Lies is really good. Uh, Journeyman is pretty good too. Monsegur. Uh, again though, the album is just a bit too long and... By the, by the time you get to Face in the Sand after Passchendaele, you kind of, like, if, if I had been in the band and been, I don't know, Steve Harris, I guess he's kind of the boss of Iron Maiden, I would have said to end the album on Passchendaele and maybe release the last three songs in the EP or something. Um, or maybe even mix it. But I would have ended on Passchendaele. It's such a good song to, to have ended on. Um, but then hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um also, it's probably the worst album artwork ever. Um, but then they have said that it was never completed and stuff. So that's, that's, that's where I rank that. Next up, we have The Book of Souls. Now, when I first heard this, I didn't... I don't know why, but nothing really stuck. And I didn't really enjoy it that much. I think possibly the length put me off. I thought I'm going to have to sit through 90-odd uh, minutes of... This makes me sound like I hate music. I mean, I listen to music constantly all day. You'd think, well, why can't you listen through 90 minutes? It's not so much the music that gets sort of... But I, I find, personally, that uh, after sort of 40-odd minutes, my brain, unless I really concentrate really, really hard, it tends to zone out a bit. Um, and, and just because it wants a different sound, I guess. Um, so... I don't know, I, I put that down to my uh, ADHD. Um, <laughs> but I listened to this the other day. I've been listening to these albums quite a lot recently. So it was sometime within the last two weeks. And I actually really, really liked it. So much so that I put it on and listened to it three times in a row. It's really catchy. Bruce Dickinson's vocals are really good on this one. And he's obviously... I don't know, spent time looking after his voice because he doesn't sound as like eh, as he did on the album that came before it, um, Final Frontier. And um, yeah, it's so good in fact that I actually have the Book of Souls tour CD. Not that I saw them, but the, the live album they bought out that went with it. And that's also really, really good. I still think it's a little bit too long at 93 minutes or something like that. However... It is really good, like most of the songs have got a hook in them, or, or a catchy something in them. Lots of great guitar playing, and I love the fact, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I love the fact that Iron Maiden have three guitar players. I think that's brilliant. Um, so yeah, this is a really good one, actually surprisingly good. Such a good late career album. Next we have Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Uh, this all the band making use of keyboards and synthesizers and stuff um not for the first time but i think they do it better on this album than on somewhere in time which as i've already stated i didn't really enjoy that one and i've, I've listened to it a number of times and i still just can't get into it this one however has got moon child which is a cool song infinite dreams uh, i can't really remember that one but obviously can i play uh, with madness the evil that men do the Clairvoyant. It's a great album and it's pretty good artwork as well. I like that artwork. It's pretty good. I'd like a poster of that. That's pretty good. I think this is also the first album I ever heard by them. My mum's boyfriend at the time um, had it on tape. Whoa, do those? Actually, they're coming back, so you probably do. Um, and uh, yeah, it was cool. Right, so next up, this album came out while I was in music college doing music and being a punk bass player in every band i could think of um and 
my friend Stewie introduced me to them or to this album specifically I think he bought it around I was like listen to this it's cool and I thought okay put it on and just literally every song is really really good except possibly the last one um yeah, and maybe nine um eight out of the silent planet is all right but it goes on for ages from what i can remember and it just goes out of the silent planet this for ages and um it gets a bit like okay great finish now please but everything else is really good um and everyone is on really top form um it's just such a good like the band brought themselves back from oblivion basically everybody had given up and then they released this and they've since gone on to become like one of the hugest bands in existence again for the second time to do it once is amazing to do it twice is incredible and now we're on to my top three favorite iron maiden albums again as with all these rankings you know things change and and stuff but um next up top three uh, number three is power slave um i love that album artwork um to be honest these last three could go in any uh, order um but this is the order i've chosen for now you've got flash of the blade which is an excellent song uh two minutes to midnight and is high which are obviously <coughs> hitty type songs and also really good and then rhyme of the inch manor is also great um, the other ones, um, I can't really remember which kind of, yeah. <laughs> and then second is Number of the Beast. Um, I quite often flip these two around, the last two, um, depending on my mood. But um, Number of the Beast is great. Like, literally every song on it is perfect. And Bruce Dickinson kind of cemented his place in the band almost immediately with this album. Such a good album. And then last but not least, for me, is Peace of Mind. Because, you know what, I don't even know why, but it is. At the moment, it's my favourite album. And quite often, it is my favourite album. Um, but again, the top three can kind of be flipped around. I think these three albums are Iron Maiden at their best. This one's got like, Eagles Dare, Flight of Icarus, Dive With Your Boots On, The Trooper, and Quest for Fire. To tame a land is eh, hit and miss, but I like it, so it's cool. Not such a cool album cover. It's kind of cool, but it's it's not my best. And then you got brains when you open it. Look, see these? It's got brains, but it's got sweet corn next to it. Yeah, I hate sweet corn. So um, there you go. That is my ranking for Iron Maiden. Now in the future, as I finish ranking my Bowie albums, I will uh review sorry review these albums as well, which means I'll be listening to them a lot more and everything else and uh yeah so thank you for watching i have been covey this has been a personal spin and a ranking of iron maidens albums i hope you enjoyed it please tell me your ranking in the comments below if you like my videos please like and subscribe and i will be back soon thank you goodbye